This is how I have been storing my texture sheets and tools. And when I first started putting things in here, it was great to just chuck my latest texture mat or thing that left a great impression on polymer clay right into the box. Then, not too long ago, it got to the point where the only reason the lid would stay on was because I would shove it in and then the shelf above it would hold it on. Well, the other day I went to pull something out and it exploded. And um, there's no going back. I am going to have to do something about this. So let me get out my magic wand. And just like that, they're all organized into a binder. No, this is a pen, not a magic wand. And it took me about two and a half hours to do all this. Let me show you how I did it. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. All right, folks, so here is what we are starting with that needs to be organized. All of my polymer clay texturing tools. Well, not all the tools, but all the things that are kind of in sheet form. I actually have a whole nother box full of things like bolts and such that are for the most part not flat. These are mostly flat sheets. This is drywall sanding mesh, which I absolutely adore. It gives this kind of a chunky, grungy grid pattern. Net. Uh, some of the ones I've made myself. This is some flowers from my garden. Oh, and then there's these from Create Along, the texture stacks. And this, which, well, I'll have to talk about that another time. This is kind of a cool thing that we'll be, you will see again someday. Um, oh, sponges, more drywall denim. This is actually a bit of a placemat. Oh, let's see, I've got all oh, these little things from Create Along, all these little plates. So how do we organize all this? How do we make order from it? Oh, and then these are polymer clay texture sheets that I have made. I'll have links to these down below and at my blog post because these are two different video tutorials that I've made showing how to make these. How do we sort all this out so that it can be found? Oh, and then this. This is kind of cool stuff. This is, um, I picked these up. These are samples of roofing, which I actually don't use because they're small and they're kind of buried in here and I never see them. What I think I'm going to focus on mostly is my binder system. Now you all had asked to see my binder system for other things. So this seems like a good time to show it to you. Here is my binder for magic transfer paper, silk screens, and stencils, and recently I added foils and leaf, although it's starting to get a little outgrown. And as, as you collect things, you'll find you'll have to adapt. Like these are two templates that recently came in Create Along boxes. And I actually don't have a place for templates because I have these, but I have some others in a folder, so I may need to get another binder <laughs> and have places for templates. That would be good. Because I have silk screens in here, I found this at Ocean State Job Lot. It's meant to go in like, you know, kids' folders for school for their pencils and things. But these are the paints and the squeegee that come in the Sculpey silkscreen kit. I think they have new ones now, but this was the first one that they put out. And I love these silver and gold paints, and the squeegee is perfect. And so I keep them in here because it just, when I'm getting out silk screens, is when I want that. You can find these again at a dollar store. Um, I'm not sure where in the country you are. I'm on the East Coast, and we have Ocean State Job Lot. So I have my foils, and this is great because I can really see what I have. This one was particularly long, so it's kind of folded, which is a shame, but that's okay. And notice I have them on both sides, too. I saved these little paper inserts, and I even cut up some neutral colored cardstock 
into pieces and I put them in between to stiffen it up. So these are foils and um, I forget what that's called. There's something, some kind of mylar? Eh, I've forgotten. Gold leaf, silver leaf. Oh, and this is red leaf, which is like, uh, well, it's flaky kind of, <laughs> flaky copper stuff. And now I'm on to silk screens. And again, I just have, I've, I always try to have a few extra sheets in here so I don't have to fill it every single time I get a new one. And I have just something behind it so that I can clearly see what the silk screen is. So these are all of my silk screens in one place and I do have them on both sides. That's the benefit of having that bit of cardstock there. See it and it kind of stiffens it up so that they're not going to get bent or wrecked. Then the next section is stencils. And you can buy these dividers too at, at the office supply store or Walmart. So here is all my stencils. Most of these, these green ones are from Create Along. And then I have some, these are left over from card making, but mixed media stencils. Love the Tim Holtz stuff. So there's stencils. This is all the magic transfer paper from Create Along. Um, of course, you can see the benefit of having these sheets and all your leftover bits all in one place, kept nice and neat, so they're not going to get bent and wrecked and you won't lose your bits and pieces. So that is my binder system. If I do decide to make another binder for templates, which I probably should, uh, I'll have to get another binder because this is definitely pretty full. So what I need to do first is kind of sort this out into categories or sizes or something that makes sense. It's funny how much these have yellowed over the years, but they still work fine, although they've gotten kind of brittle and cracked. So it'll be good to have them in a binder where they'll stay flat and won't be so much in danger of breaking. Take a handful and see what we've got. So now here's a bunch that are actually pretty much the same size, hooray. So that can be helpful. And then he's, oh and then there's all these that sadly, uh, I'm, I don't, don't think they're being made anymore. They were marketed as being for metal clay and I use them all the time for polymer clay. So I'm just going to start sorting these out. Kind of roughly by size and shape. And then there's this. Um, <laughs> I don't know where that goes. This one's interesting. It's got a handle, so that is not going to fit very well in my binder unless I snap off the handle, which um, I'd consider doing because I don't know that you would use the handle as you press. You kind of have to press all around anyways. So I'm not sure about that. I'll put that with the other thing I don't know what to do with. This stuff is terrific. I use it all the time. It's a brass screen, but it's kind of grabby. So it would be good to have that in a, um, in a plastic sleeve that it won't wreck things. And I love this. This makes the best dragon scale texture. It's mesh that garlic comes in. Right, so I have them all sorted out. <laughs> Can you tell? No, sorry. All right. <laughs> so the next thing is to get out some page protectors. And I have here, I actually bought 50 at Staples for like $10. You can start with any size. Let's start with these because they're all kind of a similar size. And I'm just going to lay these out. Oh, and that's convenient. I can fit three and three. And then these two, I could probably make, well, let's leave a little room. All right, we'll do nine pockets on this page. What I am going to do is make my own custom pockets for each of these. I'm going to use my sewing machine. So what I'm going to do is I've got my ruler and a Sharpie, and I'm just going to draw lines. where I want my divisions to be. Then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew on those lines to make pockets. 
Now I've done my sewing. So a few tips about setting up your machine for the sewing. First of all, use a really long stitch length. This is like five millimeter long stitches. And don't back tack like you would if you were sewing fabric because that will just perforate the plastic even more. That's why we want a long stitch length because if you have a whole bunch of little holes close together, you have a very good chance of it tearing along that line. And that's also why we don't want to uh, back tack because that'll just add more holes. Now I forgot to mention this. I decided to slip a sheet of paper, just a sheet of printer paper in there for two reasons. First of all, it makes it stronger. Actually three reasons. Second of all, it makes it easier to see what you have in the pockets. And third of all, you can use the back side as well. So you have twice as much real estate. So what I'm doing on the ends here is just tying these thread tails. So when you sew, leave nice long thread tails and then you can just sew them into a square knot. So right over left, left over right. And this is a better way to finish the ends when you're sewing on this. Now you can skip the paper. I just figured it makes it stronger and you know all those reasons. So I'll finish that later. Oh, also another reason is it makes it easier to cut the slits. I did this actually with my entire clear stamp collection and it was tricky just cutting one layer of the plastic. I already did these ones. But with the paper in there, well you don't have to worry about it because you only can. And this is just a seam ripper. Now I can tuck those in the pockets. Isn't that cool? Oh, if I do the mandarin duck ones, yeah, I think I'll just do this. So I, I may, um, what I'll probably do here is take her stamps out of the baggies that they came in and I'll just put them on like this and I can actually have another row up here of some smaller things because there's a little bit of room left up there. So you just carry on. So after two and a half hours, these are the only things left in the box that won't go in my binder. These are two sets of texture stacks from Create Along. And this thing, which I decided not to snap the handle off of after all. And this is Instamorph, which I can put in hot water and melt back down to reuse. So I'll probably do that. And then these will go in my box of texturing tools. So cool. I'll have an empty box. I wonder what I can put in it. And I'm just really ecstatic to have all of these on custom pages. Now some of them I stopped in the interior, so you don't have to stitch all the time from edge to edge. You can make your pockets as custom as you want. But here's one I left just so I could show you how to do it. If you're going to have one of your lines stop inside the page, what you do is you grab that thread tail and then use a tool like your seam ripper or an awl to pull on that first stitch and what it does is it's pulling up a loop and this is the thread from the back side. So you just pull that up and now you can tie this in your square knot and snip it off. I recommend doing this knotting rather than using a seam sealant like Freycheck because the Freycheck, first of all, it, it leaks onto your pages and leaves a spot and also you have to wait for it to dry which I found annoying. So there, so you can make your pockets as custom as you need. So here's my binder all filled up. You can see it's pretty jam-packed. This is a two inch binder and I probably could have used a three inch. But let me give you a little bit of a tour. Uh, it's really nice being able to see everything. Being able to flip through so nothing gets lost. I can reference all of the ones I have. One thing I changed my mind on here, this was the initial one that I showed you and I had thought that I would have stamps um, and texture sheets on both sides, but you can see how distorted and crinkled the paper is and how pushed out the plastic is. I'm concerned that this will break down over time because there's so much strain on it. 
these stamps, especially the silicone ones and rubber ones, are actually pretty heavy. So unless I have something very light, I'm going to put them all just on a single page. So I'll go back and finish that. Although the exceptions are things that are light, like I have this placemat, and here I have the denim, and I have both sides of the page being used here. Here I have some different sponge textures in this brass screen and other textures that are very lightweight. So those can go on both sides, but these things are actually pretty heavy. So all of my textures, it's wonderful. And here they are all in their custom compartments. I think this is just awesome. Yeah, these are flat and lightweight, so they get to go on both sides. Well, that didn't work. I don't know where the organizing fairies are. 